In this episode of Vinyl Hall, I'll discuss a couple of traditional metal albums, an old metal comp, a collection of demo tracks, a live album, and a couple bigger releases. One crossover thrash, the other death grind. So, some nice variety this month. You should stay and watch. No, really. First up is the second studio album from Danish heavy metal band Evil. This is Book of Evil, released in 2022 by From the Vaults. So Evil is one of those bands that could have merely ended up a one-and-done act, having released an underground classic in their Evil's Message EP back in 1984, and then they disappeared until roughly the mid-2010s. Uh, back in the 80s, they were on Ravon Records, which is the same label as Merciful Fate's debut EP. Perhaps because of that connection, it was rumored that King Diamond, in some capacity, was actually in this band. Maybe playing guitar, but it simply wasn't true. But you know what? It's a fun story. Anyways, the album starts with a spoken word intro, a short one, thankfully, because the track it leads into, Divine Conspiracy, is a fantastic power-laden crusher with some fantastic vocal melody. Things pick up considerably with Evil Never Dies, a more up-tempo number with a catchy chorus. In fact, there are a lot of catchy choruses on this album, as well as plenty of bang-worthy riffs. Final variant on this one is 1LP Gold. It is limited to 300 copies. Uh, there is also a clear variant out there, also limited to 300 copies. I will have to admit that my copy has a bit of surface noise in it. I'm not sure everyone else got that. But it's not a deal breaker, but it's pretty obvious in some of the quieter parts for sure. By the way, here's the uh, inner sleeve with lyrics and a nice little pick at the bottom there. And some more lyrics on the back. Favorites on this one include Divine Conspiracy, Evil Never Dies, and Sanctuary. Also digging the album Ender Book of Evil, a very epic mid-paced closer for the record with occasional hints of Maiden influence throughout. Also, there are lyric videos available for both Evil Never Dies as well as Divine Conspiracy, both of which are available at the From the Vault YouTube channel. You know, it's a shame that next to no one talked about this record when it came out in 2022 because it really is a hidden gem. You get catchy choruses, heavy yet melodic riffs, uh, vocals with incredible delivery and range, a good variety in the tracks, and I even like the mix. Uh, while man many legacy bands attempt to bring their old sound into the modern metal age, Evil is doing it pretty damn well and not just phoning it in. I think we've all heard the bands that are just sort of going through the motions. I don't buy that this is one of those bands. If you're already digging the more recent output from bands like Accept and Metal Church, you might find you like Evil even more. Definitely recommended. Next up is a compilation of demo tracks from American death thrash band Possessed. This is Rare Demos 1984 to 1992, released in 2022 by Die Hard, a label that Discogs refers to as, quote, a Canadian record company of questionable legality. So there's that. Uh, the record has three distinct demos on it. The first is from 1984. It's also known as the Death Metal Demo. Another from 1991, and one from 1993. The last two featuring guitarist Mike Toreo's attempt at reuniting the band, but with a different lineup. The 84 demo is a bit noisy, but you do get to hear early versions of tracks from their Seven Churches album, ones that are noticeably more aggressive, leaning a bit more into thrash, and well worth hearing as a fan. Also, no Larry Lalonde yet. Demo number two from 1991 has Toreo on vocals instead of Becerra, and he does a serviceable job. Um, sound quality is a bit muffled, but passable. And the overall style does harken back to Seven Churches again quite a bit. Demo number three from 1993 has some heavily distorted vocals and an increase in speed and aggression. Lead work on this one has also improved since the 1991 demo. Vinyl variant for this one is Classic Black. There you go. And keep those crosses the right way. As for favorites, they include Death Metal from the 84 demo. I think it's a classic track in any form. Also, The Seventh Sign from the 91 demo, especially The Seventh Sign. It's an amazing track. It should have been on one of the albums for sure. 
So I might have said in previous videos, but I've been on a bit of a demo kick these days. Um, I think getting that Nocturnus demo record from last time really kicked that into gear. So I was definitely excited to get this one, having been a Possessed fan since the beginning. Also great to have these demos all in one place. Anyways, check it out. Next is a full-length debut studio album from American heavy speed band Leather Bitch. This is Into the Night, released in 2019 by High Roller Records. So, Leather Bitch. Great name, by the way. Uh, they definitely combined speed metal with some of the early 80s Sunset Strip sound. Uh, think Lizzie Borden, Keel, or Bitch. And I guess I'm definitely thinking Bitch because, well, they're Leather Bitch. That and the production has an early Metal Blades record vibe to it, for sure. Anyway, Singer is decent and has some occasional range, and although he can sound a little flat at times, he can certainly belt out some serious metal screams. Also, a lot of ripping harmonic soloing and chord-heavy riffing. Definitely a band that takes advantage of their two guitarists. Mix is decent for what it is, but again, it might also remind you of some of those early Metal Massacre compilations. For me, that works here, and it might even be intentional. Who knows? I should also say that Side 1 of the record is a bit stronger than Side 2, but maybe not by leaps and bounds. Anyways, Vinyl Variant here is 1LP Neon Violet. It is limited to 300 copies. Beside there for you. Also comes with an insert. An amazing picture of the band. Kind of know what you're getting just by seeing that. Love it. Also, some more pictures and credits and lyrics on the reverse. Favorites on this one definitely include I Want What You Got, Sleaze City, and Killer Instinct. You might also notice that the song I'm Insane is there. Of course, that is the rat cover song they do. It is fairly decent and certainly fits well with the band's overall style. Also an interesting deep cut choice off of Out of the Cellar. I mean, most bands might have gone for one of their hits off that record. There were a few, of course, but I definitely dig when bands don't go the expected route with cover choices. So, good on them. Overall, a decent and even fun record, though also an album from a band that's just getting started. And although they do improve on their second offering, I'd still say check into this one. It's a good time. Next up is a compilation of British hard rock and metal bands called Metal Inferno, released in 1985 by Castle Killer Records. Wait, are they killing castles, or are they killers who live in castles? Or maybe they only do their killing in castles and nowhere else. Someone should tell me. Anyways, we've got some known acts here, such as Venom, Witchfinder General, Cloven Hoof, Demon, and Angel Witch but also lesser-known bands like Crucifixion, Widow, and some punk rock band named Blood. Vinyl vote on this one, as you would expect, is indeed Classic Black. The Castle Killers logo there on both sides for you. As for the favorites, definitely first and foremost Black Metal from Venom. Everyone loves that song. Friends of Hell from Witchfinder General and Gates of Gehenna from Cloven Hoof. And since Castle Killers Records only put out three comps, and that's it for releases, believe it or not, I now have all three of them, which I honestly didn't plan to do. So anyways, a decent collection of bands and tracks, though maybe instead of a few bands getting two songs, they could have gone with one apiece and then shoved more bands onto this. A minor complaint. Also, it's a little uneven given a few inclusions, especially the closing track, Come to the Sabbat from Widow, which is just ridiculous. The rest of the comp, though, is fairly decent for what it is. Give it a chance. Next is the latest live album from American death metal band Undeath. This is Live from the Grave. Originally released on the digital format in 2022, but now released for the first time on vinyl in 2023 by Prosthetic Records. So the performance was recorded at Pops in Saugat, Illinois on May 27th, 2022, and mastered by Arthur Risk, though no recording or mixing credit. Don't know why. At any rate, the mix and overall sound are pretty decent, including the crowd, which should always be heard on a live album, as you know. Also plenty of in-between song banter, which I also like to hear as it does add to the live feel of an album. It also doesn't hurt that singer Alexander Jones really knows how to work a crowd because he's definitely got a lot of infectious energy here and he clearly loves what he does. You can hear it through every track. 
Anyways, vinyl variant here is 1LP Bloodshot Red. It is limited to 1,050 copies as a record store day 2023 first release, I should say. And because it's a first release, my guess is that one or more variants are forthcoming, but that's a guess, so don't hold me to that. Also an insert, live shots of the band themselves, and some lyrics on the back. Favorites, of course, I got them. Rise from the Grave, incredible song, also Necrobionics, and The Funeral Within. You should check all three of those out. In fact, if you want to check four of them out, there are live versions, video versions, uh, such being Rise from the Grave, Enhancing the Dead, Necrobionics, and Defiled Again. You can find those all in a single concert video at the Prosthetic Records YouTube channel. So for me, one of the most effective qualities of a live album is utterly needing to see the band live after hearing it. And after hearing live from the grave, I would really love to see this band live. So job well done. Anyways, whether you already have one or both of their studio albums or you've never even heard them, this is a great introduction to this band. Next is the third studio album from American crossover thrash band Enforced. This is War Remains, released in 2023 by Century Media Records. So as someone who already liked their previous album, Kill Grid, my expectations on this one were fairly high, but the band definitely delivers. The tracks here are trimmed to the fat in terms of time, putting a whole lot into smaller spaces. As a result, the record definitely moves along a lot more efficiently. It's also got moments of catchiness amidst what is clearly an increase in aggression, all without losing their intermittent groove. Hanged by My Hand is probably the best example of it, but there are definitely others. I should also mention the cover art here. It's done by Joe Patagna, who's done a ton of cover art for metal bands, but will still be best known as the guy who brought us Motorhead's mascot on numerous covers from that band. What stands out here is its simplicity, notably for Patagna, but it really does work for the album it represents. Again, it's simple, but definitely effective. Anyways, vinyl variant here is 1LP 180 gram white, limited to 300 copies at an EMP and Nuclear Blast exclusive. Um, I did order this from Nuclear Blast specifically. There are also variants in black, red, or blue if you're interested. I also have an insert, full lyrics, pictures of the band there. Got a group shot here, as well as some credits. Favorites on this one, definitely Hanged by My Hand, amazing song, also War Remains, and Nation of Fear. Also, the very strong album ender Empire takes us out with lots of bang-worthy riffing and speedy dive bomb soloing. You should definitely check that one out as well. There's also a visualizer video available for Ultra Violence as well as music videos for War Remains and Hanged by My Hand. You can find all of those at the Century Media YouTube channel. So if you're a fan of modern crossover thrash and uh, Power Trip immediately comes to mind, then I can definitely recommend War Remains as an aggressive, grood laden record with some nods to late 80s thrash such as Sepultura and maybe some of the more intense material from Slayer at that time, notably in the solos. Overall, an excellent and straightforward album that even exceeds its predecessor on occasion. You should definitely be listening to this one, for sure. Next up is the 10th studio album for American death grind band Cattle Decapitation. This is Terrasite, released in 2023 by Metal Blade Records. So Cattle Decap returned with their blending of death metal, grindcore, and various melodic elements. Though I am catching some additional ambient sounds making their way into their core sound, it all brings together a sort of dramatic intensity that I could definitely appreciate, laid over top by the vacillating vocal madness of Travis Ryan, between barking death to screeching black to some creepy processed cleans, the last of which give off an almost early cynic vibe. Best thing about this band is that at no time does the album get comfortable in a given time signature, melody, or general pattern, but also doesn't become the scattered mess that other bands who go this route end up producing. I can think of a few right off the bat. There's also a real tightness here that almost defies logic, notably from their drummer, but also melody amidst the controlled chaos. 
Some folks might complain about the lyrics here being a little socially or environmentally preachy. Those are topics that are hardly new from this band, but I'm not really worked up about any of that. And I do get that bands will sing about stuff they're passionate about. And you know, if that passion results in the music on this particular record, then I guess I'm pretty good with it on that level. It just doesn't bug me. Of course, the artwork here by Wes Ben Scoder is truly remarkable. He's done many covers for Cattle Decap, but also Survival of the Sickest for Bloodbath, The Tritonus Bell for Hooded Menace, and Phantom Antichrist for Creator, among others for the last 30 years. Always enjoy seeing this guy's work. It's really fantastic. Just take a look at it. Anyways, vinyl variant here is 2LP, called The Fleshy Architect. Also known as Peach Blend, which is clearly not as cool as the other name for it. I'm going with the first one, of course. Also has a gatefold with lyrics, but it's otherwise a fairly bare-bones vinyl release. I do like the pictures, though. They look like they're in some weird metamorphic state. Pretty cool. Also, the artwork continues on the back. Speaking of things on the back, let's talk about some favorite songs. Obviously, Scourge of the Offspring is pretty amazing. Also, The Storm Upstairs, I was particularly moved by. And Solastalgia, great song. Also, the album closer, Just Another Body, is rather interesting with a bit of modern Paradise Lost kind of a feel in the last few minutes of the track. You should definitely check that one out. Music videos are available for We Eat Our Young, Scourge of the Offspring, and A Photic Doom. You should check those out at the Metal Blade YouTube channel. I should mention I did see Cattle Decap live on this album's tour in June, and they utterly blew away every other band on stage, including their headliner, Dark Funeral. At the end of the cattle set, the guy next to me and I were in, shall we say, a pleasant state of shock. We both just looked at each other with that look of, that was amazing. We just, like, couldn't just believe what we just saw. Very cool. So, yeah, definitely catch this band live, is what I'm saying. Easily the best I've seen all year, for sure. As for the album, I am clearly impressed with this one, though if you're simply looking for straightforward and no frills death metal, this is likely not your band. I mean, Cattle Decapitation likes to mix it up a bit, and that might alienate some of the more conservative death metal listeners out there. But I do feel that re with repeated spins, some of you might get more out of the album than you thought. You know, give it a chance kind of a thing. As for me, I'm definitely glad I did give it a chance, and I'll definitely be seeking out more in their catalog as a result. So yeah, it's really good. Check it out. So I want to do something that I haven't done on this show, and that's to give you a quick look at a couple other records I picked up that I have less to talk about, but are certainly worth showing. Starting with this one, this is the Number of the Beast 12-inch single from Iron Maiden, but not the usual one you're used to seeing. Rather, this is the 1983 Mexican pressing. You can kind of see it says, Hecho en México, and all of that there. Uh, the back, likewise, has their song titles in Spanish. Uh, the B-side is a live version of Remember Tomorrow. It was recorded during the Killer World Tour in Padua, Italy in October of 1981, but with Bruce Dickinson on vocals. Pretty cool. I'll just show you the record here quickly. It's got some interesting labels. Uh, I guess EMI did uh, distribute this one, but you can see they're quite different. Also, B-side there for you. Pretty cool find. I was pretty happy with this one. Yeah, Iron Maiden, Number of the Beast single. Also, I did snag a copy of the 1985 release of Studio Live 85 from Ingve J. Malmsteen's Rising Force. This is a Netherlands pressing. I know there are also ones uh, from Japan, Germany, as well as Europe in general. It's back there with the track listing. I had this as a kid. It's nice to have it back again. Um, I can't remember what pressing I had back then. I know some of them have the Special Edition and Maxi Single 45 listed in the corners. Others might have one or none of these. I can't remember. But I'll also take a quick look at the vinyl here. It is, of course, Polydor, like most of the foreign Rising Force stuff was. And there's the B-side for you. Pretty cool. Glad to have this one as well. Ingve Malmsteen. So it's likely that some of you also picked up some metal this month, whether it's one of these records or others entirely. You should definitely let me know what you got, if you like them or dislike them, and maybe even what you're planning on buying in the near future. Also, drop me some music suggestions. Maybe you think there are albums out there that I should be paying a little more attention to. Let me know all of that and anything else relevant in the comments below. 
Of course, if I'm an incredibly unfamiliar face to you, my name is Matt. This is the Accusation Network, where each and every week I do videos on metal vinyl collecting. I also cover the topics of classic and modern metal in general. If that sounds fantastic to you, you should definitely give this video a like. Also subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so, and share my videos with some of your friends. Other than that, thank you for watching as always, and I'll see you in the next video.